All right, let's see. So I've decided to do a little lecture on the ln of x. Going to look at uh, change base formula, uh, logarithmic rules, uh, purpose of the ln of x, at least my thoughts on it. Um, and let's uh, try to get a, a better understanding of the calculation and some 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 ease of uh, working with different calculations. All right, so I like to start logarithms. I don't know what uh, where you're at in your foundation, but I like to start by posing the question, how would you write the following sentence? The value of the exponent that you put on top of a five to get a 25 is a two. And you know, when we start a semester, most people say five squared equals 25. And unfortunately, that's not what I wrote. And you can probably intuitively sense that uh, it has something to do with logarithms since that's what this video is about. So the value of the exponent, log, right? So that's what we, that's what you want your brain to connect with uh, when you read that part of that sentence. That you put on top of a five implies that it's a base, five is the base, to get a 25 is a two, all right? So that's what that sentence is about. All right, so no different, same amount of information, but just said in kind of an inverse order. All right, so we're looking at uh, ln of x today, and e to the x and ln of x are inverses, and I don't think you can get a feel for this calculation unless you've got a couple of numbers in your head, uh, and we're going to do approximations, just pi 3.14 approximation, you get a feel for that number. No different with ln. Uh, so. When, uh, when we're talking about the ln of 2, then we're really saying, what is the exponent? ln is basically log base e of 2, okay? Except that this function is used so much that two strokes of the pen instead of one, two, three, four allows us to do things more quickly and efficiently, okay? So this is called the natural logarithm, ln. All right. Uh, so we're looking for exponents on top of E. E is approximately 2.71, okay? Uh, probably the most uh, important uh, number or approximation in high school math. Uh, maybe pi is for, you know, middle school and whatnot, but this is extremely important number to work with because a lot of uh, physics and money and banking, things are done in E notation. So what this is all about is being able to write all of the exponential growth and decay functions, but in E notation. So we start, uh, my classes, I start uh, with students memorizing some of these values, and then we work with them the rest of the semester to develop our logarithmic rules, change of base formula, speed graphing, all of that. So it begins here, all right? So 2.71, to the negative 1.1 is approximately one third. All right, so if I want to write one third to the x, then I change one third into e to the negative 1.1, and then you can see the rules of exponents with multiplication. All right, so e to the negative 1.1 x is approximately one third x. One half to the x would be written as e to the negative 0.7. These are slight over approximations. Uh, e to the 0x is 1 to the x, so there's no growth, no decay. Uh, and I'm not sure if you understand, this is for students, so I'm not sure if folks understand why something to the 0 is 1. We'll give a very quick explanation here. So m times m times m is m to the third. If I divide by m, it's m to the 3 minus m to the 1. Uh, I'm not sure I just said that properly. But one of the m's cancel, and we got m to the 2. We put another one there, another one cancels, m to the one, m to the zero. In other words, there's no difference in the factors in the numerator or denominator, so you're dividing something by itself, and that's why something in the zero gets you always a one. And if we put another one here, then we have one over m, and we designate that as m to the minus one. So we start to see the usage of a reciprocal, okay? So e to the 0.7x is two to the x, whereas e to the negative 0.7x is one half to the x because we have a reciprocation um, symbol there. Okay, so you plot those points, plot those points, 
and you start to get the L of X curve. Uh, we get a sense of moving towards smaller and smaller fractions and um, growth and decay implies that there's some kind of amount, perhaps thinking about it this way, bases are always positive, some kind of amount that gives us, uh, you know, maybe time. Okay, exponential functions over a period of time, radioactivity decays. So we're actually taking the radioactivity and then finding out uh, at what time that amount uh, occurred. I mean, those are kind of the usages that we have for these, these functions. All right, so I know this is done very quickly, uh, but you can replay it and it's uh, just trying to get at some of the, the actual usages on the other board in a moment. So if, if, and let's start beginning that process right now. So let's say we wanted to write the function four to the x in uh, E notation. Okay, how would you do it? Well, we know four is two squared, and we know two is approximately E to the 0.7. Okay, so we now know that two times 0.7 is, uh, so this is a four to the x is approximately E to the 1.4x. So that's an approximation. Okay, now, if uh, all of a sudden I wanted to say, well, every 10 years, this happens every 10 years, or the, you know, you've got a quadrupling every 10 years, then all you're doing is moving the decimal out one place, and maybe you can start to get a feel for, um, you know, the exponential function. So, uh, converting it to doubling, you know, you can convert every, every exponential function into a doubling uh, process. So, let's say that uh, you've got e to the, I don't know, 0.35, let's make it easy, 0.35x, all right? Well, we know we want the doubling function is e to the 0.7, right, x, that's the doubling function, so all you gotta do is set this to 0.7, right? And so you're doubling every two years, <laughs> all right? So uh, there's lots of usages here, uh, which we'll get to over here now. So how would you do the L in a 24? Let's get some of our rules, which I probably should have done before going to this level, but let's, let's keep going. Ahead. Ln at 24. So what is 24? 24 is equal to 8 times uh, 3. Uh, okay, so let's uh, talk about 8 as 2 cubed times 3. Uh, okay, well, I think we're there now. 2 is e to the 0.7. Uh, 3 approximations again, right, uh, times e to the 1.1, and we're quickly looking at rules of exponents, which means we're also looking at rules of logs. So what was uh, this? This was 3 times 0 0.7, 2 0.1, plus 1.1, so approximately 3.2. So this would be, if you did e to the 3.2, you'd be a little bit bigger than 24, but at least they have a feel, a feel for the number. All right, so we can look at the rules of logs now. All right, so what is element of 24? Well, we did some addition. We did some addition here, so this times this gave us addition of exponents. So we could have said that this is the ln of 8 plus the ln of 3. And that's what's taking place. The ln of 8 is the ln of 2 cubed plus the ln of 3. And then you could have said that that's 3 ln of 2 plus ln of 3. And maybe, maybe with a little bit of practice, you start to see three times 0.7. You start to see this part of the calculation. All right, so these are discussions that we have uh, in my class over the course of the semester. Um, and we just keep practicing these a couple of minutes every day, a couple of minutes every day, a couple of minutes every day. And over time, um, you start to see what's taking place. Um, I have a rule of four, you know, five minutes a day, four days in a row, usually the fourth day people start to catch on, students start to catch on. So you can figure out the change of base formula from this process. Um, so this is asking the question, remember at the beginning of the video log, the value of the exponent. You put on top of a two to get a three. Well, you need to be able to have the same base. This parentheses has to be expressed in base two notation. Okay, and I don't know what you put on top of a two to get a three, but I know what you put on top of a two, a, a, a e to get a two, e to the 0.7, right? And we're asking the question here, what's the exponent you put on top of uh, 2 to get 3? And I know 3 is e to the 1.1 approximately. 
All right, so it looks like it's 0.7x B equals 1.1, which is means x is 1.1 over 0.7. I recognize 1.1, that's the element of three. And I recognize 0.7, that's the element of two. So you're beginning to move into the territory of, oh, seeing some numbers work. All right. And how do you speed graph logs? Well, I don't do transformations. I, I build off of what I see. So let's just uh, talk about uh, y equals, uh, I'll make something up, 3 ln x minus 6 over 7 plus 8. Okay, so the speed graphing is knowing that the ln of 1 is 0 and knowing, for instance, that the ln of, of uh, 3 is approximately 1.1. That's enough information to speed graph this now. All right, so asymptote at x equals six. What makes this thing equal one? Well, seven times one is seven plus six, 13. So 13 is gonna get us one. The all one is zero. Zero times three is zero. Plus eight is eight, all right? So you got a value, let's put it right there. And then you said, what makes it equal to three? So whatever this distance is, I wanna be three times that distance, roughly. I'm going to be here. Uh, I've done a lot of these. So 7 times 3, 21 plus 6, 21 plus 6, 27. So out here at 27, and uh, we've got uh, uh, 3 plus 8 should be 11, but I'll, I'll put it in and show you why. So 27 minus 6, 21 divided by 7 is the ln of 3. The ln of, oh, I, I might have made a mistake here. ln of 3, 1.1. 1. 1. Yeah, I'm doing with regular logs. ln of 3, 1.1 1. 1 times 3, 3.3. .3 plus eight, 3 .3. Yeah. There we go. And so there's your log, there's your graph. Okay, made a mistake because I'm talking while I'm doing it, uh, rather than concentrating on it. So um, try another one here. Uh, you can pause, let me get an eraser. We'll go back and we'll have a little practice now on the things that, uh, that we just talked about. So let me give you uh, another one. Now you couldn't put L in a 2.7, right? You could have used anything, any two points. All right, so uh, how about we uh, try y equals, let's go to a negative this time. Negative 4 ln and a negative exponent is reciprocation. So we're really going to do the inverse of growth. We're really going to be doing a decay, inverse of a decay graph. So ln of uh, how about 4x minus, uh, we already got a 4 there. I don't like to duplicate any numbers. When you're starting to learn, 3x minus 6, how's that, plus 7. Okay, so you can pause the video. Try it, uh, um, and I'm going to just uh, knock it out very quickly here. Ready, set, go. All right, so I got an asymptote at x equals 2. I know it's going this way, but let's find our first value by 3x minus 6 equals 1. So we're going to do uh, add 6, uh, so 3, <laughs> 7 thirds, I believe. 7 thirds. Oh, I don't want to put it there because it's going to come down. All right, so 7 thirds gets us uh, seven and so we're going this way and so if that's there that I'm going to be right about here three x minus six equals uh, three so nine uh, divided by three is three three should get me um, minus four point four plus seven minus four seven minus four and three so point four two point six I believe okay and that should be right but you know it's morning here very early, need more coffee, let's check our numbers. So we put a two in, we get the L and a zero, undefined. Seven thirds, threes cancel, seven minus six, one. Yeah, that's a zero, that goes, seven is correct. Uh, put in a three, three times three is nine, minus six is three, that's good, that's 1.1. 1 .1. So minus 4.4 4 plus seven, 2.6, we're done. Okay, we'll do one more. And again, try this a couple of days in a row. Uh, day four, I bet you own it. So let's try it again. Uh, how about we do y equals, uh, let's do 2 ln of uh, uh, 3x minus 4 divided by 5 plus 6. There we go. All right, pause the video, you try it. Bingo, bango, bongo, here we go. So undefined at x equals 4 thirds. Yeah, that's right. 3x minus 4, so 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4. 9 divided by 3 is, I believe, 3. 
Let's check it to make sure. Three times three, nine minus four, five. Yeah, that's one, so that's gone. So six, so three gets you six. And now let's, uh, yeah, you can see the video. All right, so now five times three is 15, plus four, 19 thirds. 19 thirds should get me a three, which gets me two times 1.1, 2.2 1. 1, plus six, 8.2. You plot those points, three, there's three. This is gonna be three times further. So that's gonna be 19 thirds. Gets me 8.2 roughly, and uh, three gets me six. Okay, you got a nice little ruler here. All right, and the reason I'm doing it that way is this is the inverse, um, and I'm gonna do another video on speed graphing e to the x, and it's a one to three ratio that you're gonna be using each and every time, standardize it, and then you've got yourself some nice approximations, um, hopefully. All right. Uh, is I going to show something else? Yeah, I'm going backwards here. Yeah, it's going backwards. So, uh, inverse. Oh, yes, the inverse. Maybe we'll even do e to the x on this. No. Yeah. All right, so the inverse. So, change of base formula. All right, so how about you find out uh, what you put on top of a 3 to get a 2? I know 3 to the 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. I know 3 to the 0. 3 to the 0 is 1. Now I think 2 is in between 1 and 3, so my exponent should be between 0 and 1. Let's go find it. Oh, yeah, 3 to the x equals 2. Not the same base, but we can make it e to the 1.1 x equals e to the 0.7. Sure looks like x is equal to approximately 0.7 divided by 1.1. If I'm not mistaken, that is, let's multiply everything by 10. Oh, 7 over 11. Yeah, that does seem to be an exponent. Oh, 0.7 over, oh, that's right. This is the same as the ln of 2 over the ln of 3. I should change base formula again. Let's do a rule of a logarithm. Let's see if we can find uh, about uh, uh, log, no, I'm doing ln, sorry. The ln of 9 fourths. Uh, nine fourths, which is just a little bit bigger than two, right? Four goes into nine two. So we're somewhere between 0.7 and 1.1, you get a feel. Well, nine is equal to e to the point 1.1, which is three squared, and four is equal to um, approximately, 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 e to the point 0.7 squared, right? E to the point 0.7 is two. So I could have written this as e to the 2.2 over e to the 1.4. And what do you do with this? Do a little subtraction. So it's approximately, uh, where did that came by? Oh, 2.2 minus 0.8. So this is approximately 0.8. Oh yeah, we said it was, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense actually, because the ln of two is 0.7 and we're just a little bit bigger. Yeah, that actually makes some size sense. Oh, now, how do you use the rules of logarithms to do that? Well, I shouldn't erase that. So e to the, uh, where were we? E to the 1.4, I think it was, 1.4, and e to the 2.2, uh, yeah. So looks like when you're doing that kind of uh, calculation, there's some subtraction of exponents. So it looks like that we've got the ln of 9 minus the ln of 4. Now, in ln of 9, uh, it's very similar to, uh, actually, it's the same as the ln of 3 squared, and this is the same thing as the ln of uh, 4 squared. <laughs> actually, looking at the exponents on top of it. But let's keep going. So what do we have here? we got a little multiplication of 2 times 1.1, 2 times 1. Point, oh, yeah, the ln of 3 is approximately 1.1. Minus, uh, there's a little multiplication there, 2 times the ln of, uh, oh, I screwed up. I knew I doing something stupid, right? Squ two squared for <laughs> Trying to rush here, get a video up quickly. So two ln of two, and there's your rules of exponents. There's your 2.2 .2 minus 1.4, which is what you do here, because that's e to the 2.2 .2 minus 1.4. And we're looking at all of that exponential activity. Okay, log starting, Captain Kirk, right? No, predating you. Data entries, Captain's log. All right, uh, so we did that rule of the logs. What else we got here? 
Huh, that's about it. So this is uh, very early in the morning, pre-coffee video, so excuse the um, little errors here and there.